In 2008, Tibet was suddenly in the spotlight. Um, there were riots in Lhasa, a road now existed and change was inevitable. So with the help of the Rubin Museum of Art, I started working on a show which became In the Shadow of Everest. Sometimes straight after the trip, you're very emotionally attached to certain images for various reasons. So I find it's much more objective if you let some time go by before you actually sit down and uh, look at the material. You always have to leave some images out, unfortunately, and but there's always sort of regrets and compromises. But when I edit, I try and bring a story to the series, pacing, sequence, photographs of objects, photographs of people, trying to give a cross-section of the experience I had. We travelled to Lhasa and spent three days acclimatising there because of the altitude. Then travelled on to Shigatse and then down to a place called Tingri, which is still on the Friendship Highway. Highway is a very fancy name for this uh, dirt track, essentially. Friendship Highway and drove south with Chor Yu in the distance on the horizon. I actually took a picture there of the yakmen returning from the Kumbu with their yaks. The Rongbuk Valley stretches north from the base of Mount Everest towards the Tibetan Plateau. It's about 30 to 40 miles long. It seemed a lot longer um, as we covered it all on foot. There's the Rong River that runs through it, and it's famous because of the Rongbuk Monastery, which is the highest monastery in the world at, I think, around 17,000 feet. I spent a couple of days at the Rongbuk Monastery and I actually did a portrait of the head lama and photographed the pecha, the prayer books in the wall with all of the little cubby holes, which is another image in the show. And we sort of got to know everyone. And there were some young monks who were preparing some holy bread, the tsampa, for a special event. We were actually camped literally in front of the, of the monastery, in front of the gompa there, with Everest behind us, sort of creating this beautiful uh, background to, to our little campsite. This is an image of uh, Nawang Choto. She's from Kata. She's a nun at the Rongbuk Monastery. I was there during prayer and she was beautifully positioned in that sort of light that was coming in through a high window. And you notice in the foreground she's got her little teacup for the butter tea. And on her lap she has the pecha, the traditional Tibetan prayer book that's usually wrapped in that beautiful silk and has those sheets of paper that are all stamped out from the wood blocks. I shot quite a few images just because I was worried that I, I wouldn't get a sharp exposure with such low light. I was sort of holding my breath as I take them. This is all medium format, so depth of field and, and the light is, is much more critical. Choldrum, 46 years old, from Pelep, head man of the village, eight children, this was photographed on uh, May 20th 
at uh, Everest Base Camp. Hassan Nobu from Pese, 74 years old, with his prayer wheel. His wife died several years ago. He has no children but six sheep. The last village we visited was Tsombuk, and there we spent a lot of time with Passang in her living room. She was spinning wool most of the time. being the only Westerner in the village. The children don't hide their excitement or, or surprise, which means that photographing children is always very exciting. They're not guarded, they're not self-conscious. I was fascinated by uh, Tibet. I'd read books about Tibet growing up. It just seemed like one of those places that's been very untouched by time. Partly due to its geographic remoteness and partly due to the very strong sort of Buddhist beliefs that come out of that part of the world. This show is really a photographic diary of the time I spent there. It turned out to be a, a life-changing experience and as far as I started working on taking photographs of people who retained their traditional way of life and my photography has changed dramatically due to that trip. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Maro, Rosa, me, 